Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about something that we haven't ever talked about in 300 episodes. We want to talk about deposits, down pays, partial payments, and how you can put that into your Shopify store. With me on the show to dive deeper into this topic, I have Diana Bursons. She is a co-founder of Highpound, a Shopify partner building uh, company that's building down pay that enables Shopify merchants to offer deposits and different payments on their products. Before becoming a founder, Diana worked in product management at Shopify itself in the headquarters in the orders and merchandising team, focusing on building new primitives for subscription, as well as pitching and designing the primitives for enabling partial payments on the Shopify platform. So we have somebody who really was at the core of Shopify and was working on challenging solutions there. So let's welcome her to the show. Hi, Diana. How are you today? Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's a great sunny day here in Ottawa, so I'm. Uh, it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, what's the story be behind finding a solution to simplify pre-orders, partial payments for Shopify merchants? Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to share. So um, yeah, you mentioned I you know, started my whole e-com journey uh, working at Shopify and um, it was the pandemic when we first started focusing on a lot of this, you know, selling strategy space. Um, I was on the subscriptions team at the time. So the whole big rework, uh, building primitives that support subscriptions, my team and I worked on that and, you know, huge demand for it. And it boomed during the pandemic. Um, but there was a piece that I think was still a need and was exacerbated during the pandemic, which was this concept of how do I collect partial payment? You know, I um, I think it was shocking to see, but it was exacerbated by the fact that there were supply chain issues. Merchants couldn't get products in time. Um, it wasn't even about build times at the time. It was about the fact that the shipments wouldn't come in for weeks upon weeks. Mm -hmm. And we kept hearing that there were there were a ton of cancellations, like order cancellations. They couldn't really help people. Um, and at the time, there was no way to say, listen, I'll buy it from you, but can you just charge me later? And that was kind of the, the pitch that I made back back in the day to, you know, try to solve this problem right. Um, you know, keep everything in one order, you know, not have duplicate orders, which was what was happening at the time, and really push forward into this concept of, you know, I want to leave you, like, I believe in your product, I want to leave you some money now, but I don't think it's fair to collect everything up front when I'm waiting months to get the product, right? So that was kind of like the big story. And we um, we built out the first prototype at uh, the Shopify hack days. So we did like quarterly hack days. Um, I rallied a, a team around me of like, I think it was 25 people or so to try to pump out a... Um, a prototype in three days. And so we did this, you know, this full run through and ended up being one of the top 10 projects uh, that was picked during that hack days. And then I, I was able to convince leadership to get me a team and, you know, let's build this primitive right and, and solve the problem. Um, and so the rest was history. We, you know, worked on that for, for several years and uh, it just released uh, last year in, no, sorry, two years ago um, in the summer. So I was no longer at Shopify at that time. And uh, I saw the release uh, my old tech engineer um, sent it to me and I'm like, this is out now. Like I'm not working at Shopify. Maybe I should just tackle solving this because I know it so well and I know it's still a problem. So yeah, it was kind of a roller coaster going through it, but that's kind of like a bit of the, you know, the steps to, to getting there. Now the pandemic is long behind us, but obviously it's a very powerful selling strategy even nowadays. Tell me about the, the challenges, uh, the, the learning curve that you hell, um, had when you were building the solution. Yeah, well, it was, it's interesting because, you know, I'm inside Shopify, the world is very different. You're focused on solving problems a specific way where, where it's, you know, solving them in, you know, the UI for merchants or building APIs and making it possible for partners to use them. And so now I've, I switched over to being a partner and using the, the tools that I helped build and getting frustrated by the limitations I set upon myself <laughs> um, after the fact. And so like, that was a huge, um, huge learning curve, you know, when we first started getting into it, obviously trying to refresh my memory on everything that is payments um, that we built out. And, um, and then on top of that, it was just, 
you know, the process of getting approved, the process of starting from zero and, you know, thinking through the way, the best way to build the app and the best way to um, build it quality. And I really didn't want to cut corners, build hacks, you know, didn't want it to just really uh, evolve it organically and, uh, you know, build it to make it feel like Shopify. But it was it was challenging um, getting approved, making sure that everything, you know, we dotted the I's, crossed the T's, right? Um, it was a very different experience than just having everyone to talk to inside Shopify, you know, and e easy ways to get help and get unblocked. Um, but the journey was absolutely worth it. It's been, I think, a year and a half now since we we started working on it, and we only launched last July. So it's, uh, yeah, it's quite, quite a long path. I think... The area that your solution works very well in is for customized products. I, I think you uh, to, 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 um, told me before that you found out that deposits and partial payments are actually a huge part of the business outside there in the world. And there was not really a solution for it. Tell me who is using it and what did you learn about the usage itself? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean... You know, I, I'm sure you've purchased furniture. Uh, you know, you go into a store and you not only have financing options, but you have the option of leaving a deposit and waiting for the product, especially when you pick your fabric type and color and all these things. <clears throat> and it's no different shopping online. You know, Shopify has a ton of homeware stores, lots of furniture stores, and a lot of them want to offer this option of customization. Like, of course, I want it to be in a fabric type that I like. I don't want to just pick something and, you know, commit to it. Um, you know, personalization is the name of the game when it comes to furniture, uh, when it comes to like bespoke jewelry, you know, think engagement rings, think, you know, really customized things. And, um, and so like that was, we first thought that it was going to be all about pre-orders, engaging demand. And, you know, of course we do support that and we do work with customers that are launching products all the time. But the big impact was these merchants coming to us and saying, like, I have an eight to 12 week build time and I charge, you know, three, $4,000 on, on this couch or these products. Um, I have no way to partially collect without ruining my accounting, because the only way was mm -hmm. to kind of duplicate orders, create draft orders, you know, 50% discounts, like all these crazy, you know, hacks were, were available. And so you had that and these customer, these merchants were super frustrated that there was no way to do a simple selling strategy that's existed for decades in brick and mortar. <laughs> so it was a huge, you know, very like, logical thing that once we we enabled it, it was like, well, it was a no brainer. It's, they got more sales. They got people who, you know, didn't have to overextend themselves to try to pay for these things or take on financing and, and pay a, a really high interest rate on those products. So that was a shock to us. And, you know, that's kind of like the niche that we really want to focus on and, and just make sure that we're, we're available for those kinds of uh, purchases, um, especially as, you know, Purse strings get tighter, things are more expensive, you know, and and mm -hmm. people struggle to kind of, you know, pay things off. So yeah, it's it's been it's been really cool seeing a bunch of different furniture across the world come on and you know use <laughs> use deposits for it. So well, that's absolutely amazing. And I think also it commits the buyer to um to sign up with the supplier. And it's like, okay, I just pay a down payment here and the rest comes when it gets delivered. Now, can you give me some examples? You don't need to to, to say the brand name or the customer's name of, of industries beside of furnitures who are using the principle and what kind of results they see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, another another no-brainer um, I find is appointments. So services that require appointments. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of customers pick an event date. They want to book, you know, uh, aesthetic treatments, all that kind of stuff and massage therapy, you know, you name it. And it's very uncommon in the service services industry to charge somebody before services are rendered. So that's a huge area where we're seeing a lot of traction and seeing a lot of partnership opportunities with appointment booking apps that, you know, really need this, this functionality. And it's complex enough to make it very difficult to, you know, build it into appointment booking apps as well. Um, so that one is seeing a lot of great traction. And then um, pre-sales are, are crazy as well. You know, you uh, are a new merchant or an entrepreneur that, that, is testing the waters and wanting to see if people are willing to commit. 
and um, we did we did a big launch with a company in Denmark um, called Uno earlier this year. They I believe it was they sold fifty thousand units in twenty four hours, and all through uh, partial like using deposits. But the the interesting thing about a lot of the EU is there is a a rule where you can't sell a pre order and collect payment, even partial payment, if you don't have a, a date when you're you're going to ship the product. And because they didn't, they were able to just do a $0 deposit and then collect the balance automatically after the fact. So really helped them out, um, kind of, you know, not worry about setting accurate dates and then dealing with customer frustrations on, you know, when is it going to come in? Um, they used that strategy and I think sold, yeah, I think 50,000 units. And then they did an, another batch, like another drop um, as well as they, you know, helped kind of understand the the demand. Um, and then in the end, I think they fully sold out, uh, you know, with that pre-order campaign. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty impactful, you know, journey and also just like kind of unblocked legal regulations, you know, that are coming, coming up now. Yeah, just listening to you, there are so many ideas popping up. Obviously, pre-order that helps the seller or the supplier, obviously, with financing the production. Um, so if you take exactly. a deposit in, so you're not starting from zero. And that might small help small and medium enterprises actually go to into prototyping or thinking about launching a new product. So everyone wins at the end of the day. And obviously having a deposit when it comes to events or other kind of bookings, I, I just made a, a deposit for a, an accommodation that I'm going to move to in a few weeks so mm, same principle nice. so i think it's all over the place um now from a implementation standpoint from the shopify version um what kind of dashboard or what kind of process do they need to follow to make a product available for a deposit for a down payment yeah i can i can kind of take you through that um it's pretty straightforward we create what's called a purchase option right the option to pick a deposit at uh, on the product so um all that needs to happen is the merchant needs to create this purchase option within the app and then just assign the products that they want to see the product, the deposit option on. So that is, um, they can do it manually. Um, we've just enabled tag based, um, tag based purchase options where you can set a product tag and then it'll just assign and unassign as the products move in and out of that tag or multiple tags. So that's kind of the easy, you know, way to set up the purchase option. And then there are um, two blocks that we have on the theme. The first one being on the product page, showing the option of deposit or pay uh, full payment. And then on the cart as well, we have uh, a nice block that kind of breaks down how much you're going to pay today for your whole cart and how much you're going to pay later. So those two, along with just creating that purchase option, is like the, you know, like the, the very quick way to get started. Um, but recently we're, well, we're exploring, um, the, the new customer extension extensibility on, on customer accounts. So we have plans for that, but we, we do have, um, a customer portal right now available where you can change your payment method. So let's say mm -hmm. it's been months, your card is, you know, expired, you have a new one, um, you're able to just go in, change it um, so that you don't have your order held up later on when it's ready to go. So that's also available. Um, it's in extensibility for Shopify Plus. And so we have that uh, extension, but it's also available for non Shopify Plus stores just with the standard like order status script. Um, and so like all of that and um, custom workflows and stuff all available as well through our API, which we just publicly launched. So um, pretty straightforward, but if you're looking for complex workflows, there are like lots of things we're working on as well. Mm -hmm. You touched on a very interesting topic. The credit card has expired. Are there any other areas or other tools that help the buyer and the seller with, with managing the, the payment flow? Um. Yeah, so it's there's a lot of um, notification systems now, like they're built into Shopify for um, payment reminders as well. So they're, you know, a huge thing that people need is like an understanding of, you know, if if our app enables you to collect payment anytime you want as a merchant, which um, the card stays on file and you can do as a customer, I kind of want to know what the, you know, when you're going to do it or be given the choice of just doing it myself. Right. Um, so the payment reminder kind of system works 
with our app and it's it's a way to just send an invoice at the right time you know just to to make sure people are aware that you know their their cards about to get dinged um so those are kind of the ways you manage it and uh we've seen like a lot of a lot of people kind of looking for that the biggest thing that actually sh- surprised me about everything was that merchants like a lot of the merchants that we work with didn't want automatic payment collection they they felt uncomfortable with the fact that the card was on file and they could charge it at any time. They would have rather, you know, give the customer the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, just a heads up, we won't be sending your order unless you pay the bill. Um, and then as a last resort, they are able to use that um, as a way to collect payment. But that was a surprise to me. I expected it to just be like, ah, you know, everything's automatic, just let it do its thing. And I'm like, that that shows how mindful like the, the merchants are on Shopify. So that was really cool. Yeah, I think being considerate about your client and rather yeah. over communicate and just taking the money and getting chargeback requests because the customer cannot they remember what he, they exactly. don't know. Um, then you rather over communicate on that side. Is there anything kind of a homework that a, uh, a merchant needs to do before they install the app? What's the onboarding process there? Not really, no. Um, we we have like a little on- onboarding guide inside the app and everything. Um, we all also just offer, you know, demos and onboarding if people want to speak to us. Like, I, I mean, the best part of my day is doing that and just like sitting down and hearing, you know, what people want to want to do. And it's it's pretty unique every time. So it, got, it kind of like highlight of my day, why I became a founder. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, though, even if you want to get started on your own. Um, the only thing, you know, there, like I said <laughs> earlier, uh, there are some limitations to using you know, partial payments on Shopify. Uh, a couple of the big ones are um, you need to be on Shopify payments or PayPal mm-hmm. Express. So that's kind of like, you know, uh, the current limitation for payment gateways. And then um, the other thing is deposits work on the online store. So they don't work on POS. Mm-hmm. You can collect payment on POS with uh, the orders that you place on the online store. That's totally fine. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, there's no way for that to work. And then they also don't work for draft orders. So mm-hmm. people come in and say, well, I have a big custom order. I just want to charge 50% on that one and then charge 50% later. And that unfortunately just isn't possible. Draft orders don't understand what a deposit is. Um, So a lot of the customers who come to us about that issue, um, I kind of run them through a workflow where, you know, there's a, there's a customer we have that sells uh, custom wedding cakes and, you know, you tell, tell them what, what you want and you know, what it's going to look like and everything. And so the way he just, he needed deposits so bad because you order this thing so far in advance and it's like very difficult to manage paying all your wedding expenses and then this cake as well. So it's a really good way for him to get business early. And so he creates a custom product on the, uh, on his Shopify online store, uh, hides it from SEO, like does all that magic and makes the page really like personalized to the couple that's getting married. And then they can leave a deposit with our app and everything, run through the cart, you know, and uh, and check out. And then he just has everything on file, the orders there, and then he can just delete the product because he doesn't need it anymore. So it's like such a cool workflow that that you know we designed together to use it. And I'm seeing that more often now, where I tell people it's a limitation. They don't want duplicate orders. They don't want to deal with you know discount codes and all this stuff. And then I take them through it, and they're like this is worth it because people really need the ability to just partially pay. So it works out really well, even despite the limitations. So, Yeah, I think it's a very elegant solution. And and I think everyone wins there. It's, it's very convenient for the customer and they understand what the down payment or deposit is. And they're happy to do that. And now you bring it online. And if you do it manually, obviously, as I said, there's many steps involved to, to get it right. So rather have a, a custom product page for a moment so that they can book their wedding cake and, and pay for it. Exactly. Um, what's the, or who's your perfect customer? We spoke about a couple of, of different uh, industries and niches. Who's your perfect customer? Yeah, I think our perfect customer is, so, you know, I, I really, I strongly believe in niching down and really just building something that solves a need and then growing out. Um, so we're highly focused on this custom made to order space specifically 
furniture, um, you know, lighting, homewares, all these things, a lot of them have delays, a lot of them have build times. And uh, the same with jewelry, where, you know, I, I think I can't even remember how many merchants we have with, you know, custom wedding rings, engagement rings, you know, all this, all this kind of, uh, this kind of stuff, they, you know, there's a great customer we have that um, all their pieces are made in Greece, you know, handmade in Greece, build times are, you know, into the several weeks slash months. And um, yeah, they switched to deposits. They were trying um, buy now, pay later solutions. And so like you have, I don't know, like a 5% interest fee now as a merchant with buy now, pay later, oh, because geez. it's based on like, it's a loan. Right. And you know, it's, right. it's uh, that's the only way to kind of circumvent it. But the thing we found with them was, well, twofold, their customers, they didn't like being taken to another, you know, login page and another account they had to manage and, you know, figure out like when payments are due and all that kind of stuff. Um, so that was a confusing experience. So they were losing people there. Um, and then they didn't like the fact that payments start right away. So there's nothing, there's nothing the customer can do to defer those payments and start them later unless they pay an interest rate of like 15%. Right. Um, and so once they switched over, like that was a really impactful kind of journey change for their buyers where everybody knows what a deposit is, you know, um, and it's very easy to say, okay, I can see 50% will be charged today and then I will pay the rest when the product ships. So um, yeah, it's hearing these stories. I'm like, okay, this is our target, you know, niche. This is, these are the people that really understand the impact of the, you know, of taking a deposit. And um, I'm, I'm very excited to kind of focus on, you know, sharing more of those stories and like hoping to help other, you know, stores. No, I hope that will make a lot of listeners and merchants out there very happy that their solution like yours is available. Uh, how does your pricing structure work? Mm, yeah. So we only have one current pricing that's uh, available on the app store. It's $9.99 uh, subscription fee per month. And then we do a transaction fee based on just what we helped you sell. So if mm -hmm. you sold, you know, those particular orders with deposits, we collect a 0.3% uh, fee on those, um, not 3%, 0.3. And uh, as you sell more though, we discount that rate as well. So we go down to 0.25 after 5K and so on and so on. Um, and then of course, you know, there's merchants where that, that still doesn't make sense because they sell, you know, a $100,000 car <laughs> or something. Um, those merchants, we, you know, also offer fixed price plans as well. So if they want to just say, Hey, this does, doesn't logically make sense for the way I do business, or I'm just selling so much that, um, I need to have a stable price that I pay every month. Mm -hmm. Like we, we do that all the time for, especially for furniture stores where, you know, the fees are, uh, they do accumulate. And if you have pretty stable sales and you know what to expect, they would prefer just having that line item on the, you know, what, what they can expect. So that's kind of like a little overview of our pricing. Okay. No, that sounds more than fair. Before we come to the end of our coffee break today, is there anything that you want to share with all listeners that we haven't covered yet? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, a big, a big thing about deposits, um, that I think, you know, there's like this whole concept of helping personalization and, you know, gauging demand for pre-orders and stuff. But like the thing that gets me going, um, I guess is that I'm a huge advocate for, you know, making less things that might or might not sell. And so I love the concept of, you know, the, the fact that you can increase sustainability on, you know, fat, like, uh, fashion and even even the furniture, even all these things that consume um, materials that potentially won't ever sell. I, I love the concept of, uh, you know, built on fulfillment or like built on purchase, um, all that stuff. And so that's kind of like my big thing that I'd like to change in the world with, you know, something like this. Um, I really want to impact businesses and like kind of just not introduce more waste into the, into the world and into environments. So I think like, giving customers this option, like you're, you're able to do that. You're able to just know what's going to sell and what's not going to sell before you even produce it. So that's just really, it's an exciting part of, of what we do. Yeah. I think you opened the door for a lot of merchants where Shopify was not an option. And now one of a sudden it is, where can people find out more about your solution or your team? Um, yeah, so we have a website, uh, it's getdownpay.com, but of course we're on the app store. It's just one word, downpay. Um, so they can absolutely check check us out there. 
we have chat everywhere on our website. So please feel free because it's probably going to be me saying hi and uh, helping. Um, so, you know, uh, kind of like all over the place, uh, you know, you can find me in Shopify community as well. I like, kind of like poke in and help people see if there's a solution that we can help them with. Um, so a little bit of a little bit of everywhere, I guess. <laughs> okay. Okay. Excellent. I will put the links in the show notes. Then you just want to click away and I hope you will be very busy with a lot of chats from people <laughs> reaching out to you. <laughs> Excellent. It'll make, my, it'll make my day. I love that part. <laughs> okay. So to our listeners, reach out to Diana. Cool. Thanks so much for your time today. I think um, that was a, a great overview that Shopify can offer much more than just the structured things and can be an option for merchants that are selling custom-made products and need a deposit to get started. Thanks so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision. But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember, your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.